We're at Mobile World Congress Los Angeles. I'm at the VMware booth with Shaker Iyer. He's the uh, GM of the telco and edge cloud business for VMware. And uh, obviously we need to talk about the cloud. Yep. Uh, it's, it's on all the service providers' minds, especially as we're moving to 5G. So how are telcos and, and service providers expected to uh, partner with the big public cloud providers? So first I would say the cloud essentially is something that is uh, becoming much more real for the telcos as they are thinking about both the concept of virtualization in 4G as well as the transition to a 5G infrastructure. So one part of this is just how are they going to develop the level of agility required, the ability to create and launch new services on top of a cloudified infrastructure, and that concept itself is relatively new to most telecom operators. Alongside that, in the context of 5G, there are probably a couple of areas where public cloud providers become important in the telco landscape. One, uh, there is this notion of edge computing where telecom operators are taking what is historically done in the back-end data centers and then bringing it closer and closer to enterprise edges. So there, there is the notion of how they can partner up with some of the public cloud providers to provide more services on top of that edge infrastructure. Another area where public cloud providers become important is for things like disaster recovery of their setup. So a telecom operator might choose, for example, for some subset of their network functions to recover it off of a public cloud infrastructure. And often it might have to do more with their IT and data center type applications rather than their network core and radio applications. Okay, so yeah, that's, a, that, that's actually a great example of like how that, 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 they keep that business continuity going without having to invest in that redundant infrastructure all over the place. Yeah. Um, okay, well now, the, the other thing that I guess is putting pressure on service providers is that they have to not only, they can't look at the whole world as, as uh, you know, we're the carrier and then there's one cloud, their, their, their customers are wanting a multi-cloud world. Um, how does you know, VMware help in that effort to get service providers in order to provide multi-cloud services across, you know, across different platforms? Yeah, so in this context, actually, it would be useful to know even the taxonomy of how some of the different clouds themselves uh, operate. So we divide the cloud world at a high level into public clouds, private clouds, telco clouds and edge clouds. Okay. When people talk cloud, they popularly talk about the public cloud, I mean Amazon and Azure and Google and Oracle and IBM and so on. Uh, whereas there are tons and tons of our customers that are operating cloud-like environments inside their own corporate data centers. More and more telecom operators are now looking at building their network infrastructure in the form of clouds. So that is sort of the third cloud pool. And then the fourth area is where edge computing is becoming prominent and that becomes another area of cloud computing. Now, as a result, if you look at an operator, they really need to coexist in a world where there are a number of public cloud providers, many, many enterprise customers that are operating their own private clouds, and who knows how many edge cloud providers there are going to be. So it is important for the telecom cloud or the telco cloud to find a way to interoperate with each of these different cloud environments. And that's why when we at VMware build our software to help the operators, we are building it in a way in which it can not only enable them to be efficient, but it can also interconnect between them and these other cloud environments so that they can layer on top of this applications that can consume resources from multiple clouds. Oh, okay, so not, not just helping them with different cloud vendors, but helping them with different types of clouds and making that experience the same all the way throughout. Exactly. Okay. Now let's talk about, um, you know, it kind of in the edge computing context, how does, you know, being cloud native or having a, a cloud native approach give, uh, how does that give a company an edge, when, it, when an edge, an advantage when it comes to edge computing? Why is that such a necessity? Yeah, because uh, if you think about what is happening with edge computing, you take what is otherwise centralized large data centers and you kind of bring them closer and closer to the edge of where the actual action is. 
and that's usually where consumption takes place as a consumer or an enterprise. And as that happens, you are kind of downsizing your large scale data center environments to be smaller and smaller as you get closer to the edge. In order to now serve up the kind of applications that are needed from the edge, these are usually low latency type applications. They need kind of short response times. And it's very important to be fast paced in terms of creation, deployment, consumption of these applications from these edge environments. And so as a result, natively it is important for these edge locations to become container ready so that you can actually bring up and bring down these environments fast and serve them up quickly. So that's why when we look at the difference between what might be back-end data center scale computing to edge computing, it is important that these edges are all cloud native and that they all have the ability to serve up applications very quickly. Do you feel like the edge needs to be, um, you know, in the same in the same context as a, as we think of public clouds? It needs to be have that kind of portability to it so that you can uh, take those resources and move them around to wherever the application needs to be. Is that is that sort of how that works? Sort of. I'd probably explain it a little differently, which is if you think about the public cloud, you can think about it as a much more static, large scale, and a very scalable, multi-tenanted environment, but it is still static, okay? okay. And yes, you can bring, I mean, you can sort of create a bigger or larger pools of capacity within that data center, but it's still located in one physical geographic location. If you think about the edge, I think you should think about multiple distributed locations that are closer to the endpoints of consumption, and while it is important to be able to scale up or down, it's probably more important that you can serve the purpose of the uh, latency requirements of the application closer to the endpoint, right? You will invariably want to move some resources around and you will want to maybe even tie together multiple edges to right. a consumption point, yeah. but it's not as important to be scaling up or down an edge. It is much more important that the edge itself is closer to the consumption point. Got it, and, and, and did you ever think uh, that we would be talking, having so many IT conversations in, in the context of telcos? <laughs> Yeah, probably not. I mean, four years back, that's when we started this journey. Uh, I think we have been fortuitous to have had the IT journey now for over 20 years. Right, yeah. And so many of the concepts around uh, compute, data, virtualization, uh, network around. storage, management, security, these are all now coming into being in the, in the telco network in the telco cloud. So I think the short answer is no, I wouldn't have imagined it. But on the other hand, now when we look at it, the answer is pretty obvious. All right, well thanks so much for taking the time with us today. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks for having me.